Hi everyone, welcome back. So let's try another example with those crystallographic planes. Now I promise if you really want a lot of practice, you can keep on doing problems for chapter three in the practice, and you will see a whole bunch of these. So get good at it. Now let's follow our procedure, our algorithm, our method, whatever you want to call it. So first off, oops, there you go. Um, do I need to really relocate the origin? Well, I don't because my plane does not go through that point right there which is where I have my origin set current. So I'm good. Second step, where does it intercept? Well, the only axis that it actually intercepts is the x-axis and does that at a point a over two. So for b and for c, it's infinity because straight lines intersect at infinity. Why do they do that? It's magic. Then I invert them, which gets rid of all these infinities because it turns them into zeros. So I have two over A, one over infinity B, one over infinity C. And multiply each of these individually by that side length for my cubic cell. Well, you shouldn't say cubic cell, my unit cell. There we go. So two, zero, and zero. And then I reduce it. Um, I'm not going to make it one, zero, zero, even though I technically could divide by two. I would only do that if I had other numbers in here. So my Miller indices would be two, zero, zero. Two, zero, zero, in parentheses. Okay, let's try one more. So this one, do I need to relocate my origin? Well, no, I don't need to relocate my origin because my origin's right here. Now where does it intersect? Um, well, this one right here is at a half, that one is at about three quarters, and that one is at one. Um, I know you're like, you're like, well, how would I know that's three quarters? Um, for any example where I would have a problem, I don't actually expect you to realize that. You always have multiple choices, and that will be the only one that makes sense. Just like by, you know, logic and reasoning, you'll be able to figure out which one it's supposed to be. So intercepts are a over two. I go half a unit a in this direction. I go a whole unit b in this direction, and three quarter units of unit c in that direction. Then I invert them. So 2 over A, 1 over B, and 4 thirds C. So 4 over 3 C, gotta be careful of that. Then I get rid of the A, B, and C. Now I have the 2, 1, and 4 thirds, which isn't good here. So I gotta get rid of all those fractions. And so I have 6, 3, and 4. 6, 3, 4. So my Miller indices would be 6, 3, 4 in this particular case. Okay, and then I am done with that. That's it. Just don't forget parentheses, that's important. And they also have things called a family of planes, which is very, very similar to our directions. It's just all the planes that are crystallographically equivalent, which means they have the same atomic packing. Um, do you remember from earlier when I was talking about how we had um, our face-centered cubic cell and it's like five on the top, and then it had four underneath that. You know, we've got a blank right here. We can't really see them. And then we had some more underneath that. Okay. So we have them all of them packed. And I said, well, it's kind of an A-B pattern because we have five. And then we have four. And then we have five. When we actually looked at how the things are ordered, the best way to order it was, well, oh, it's actually A, B, C. Because the best packing is along the plane that does this. So what you'll see is that in some planes, we have the same packing. They touch in the same way. While in this plane, they do not. We have all these gaps. And this plane right here, also gaps. So which plane you choose will have a different atomic packing factor. And we have to make sure that whichever planes have the same packing, well, they have are part of a family of planes. A family of planes. Um, if you're certain about how you would do this, it's just more or less you're changing your coordinate axes um, and where your origin is. And you move it around and that's how you figure out where all these planes are. Um, if these side links are different, that would also mess things up and you have to take that into account as well. So what are some common crystallographic planes? Well, the 001 plane is fairly common, which is the bottom plane. Like any side plane is common. And that's because of the simple cubic cell. 
the 110 plane is also very common. And if you're wondering why it's common, well, think of your body-centered cubic cell. Your body-centered cubic cell. This is its closest plaque plane. And finally, this one right here, the 111 plane. Wait, well, what, is that one common? Well, if you remember our face-centered cubic cell, that's the most closely packed direction. It's why we have that weird ABC structure, even though it looks like it's you know five on top of four on top of five. Well, if you look at it from this direction, this is where it is most closely packed. They are touching as much as they can. In this case, it's also where they're most closely packed. In this case right here, also where they're most closely packed. So that's why those are very common planes because our body-centered cubic, our face-centered cubic, and our simple cubic, those are the directions that are going to probably be affecting a lot of the mechanical properties. So that's it for today. I hope this helps you, and hopefully you're starting to get a hang on those crystallographic planes. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.